Well, President Trump is calling for Attorney General of the United States to shut down the investigation into Russian meddling and possible collusion. In a Twitter storm this morning, the president wrote, this is a terrible situation and Attorney General Jeff Sessions should stop this rigged witch hunt right now before it continues to stain our country any further. It was one in a series of tweets about the probe. He also quoted attacks on the FBI, accused Robert Mueller of unspecified con unspecified conflicts, called collusion with the Trump campaign a total hoax, and tried to distance himself from his former campaign chairman, who's currently on trial. Joining me now, Jordan Fabian. He's a White House correspondent for The Hill. Jordan, you know, the president doesn't mention the Mueller probe during his rallies last night, in particular in Tampa, Florida. But then he goes online and he tweets about it extensively. I mean, does he feel that it's he's getting too close to the fire at this point and this has become a sense of pressure for him? Well, clearly, the president seems to be agitated by this probe, as he has been for a long time. But now that the trial has begun of his former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, the seriousness of this investigation has seemed to really strike the president. And we see him lashing out on Twitter this morning, uh, you know, making a very direct request of the attorney general to put an end to this probe. That's a significant escalation of his attacks on it. And uh, it really raises the legal stakes and the political stakes for the president moving forward. You know, you mentioned raising the legal stakes, Jordan. Can Mueller use President Trump's tweets as a pressure tactic for making a case for obstruction? Yes, and there are indications that he already is, is doing that. The New York Times reported a week or two ago that uh, Robert Mueller's team is looking at President Trump's tweets about Jeff Sessions and the fired FBI director, James Comey, in trying to put together an obstruction case. So I'm sure that this tweet today will be on the special counsel's radar. And not surprisingly, we haven't heard from the Department of Justice on these tweets in particular that the president released today. But, you know, at this point, Sessions seems to be keeping his head down, especially with past attacks from the president. What's the relationship like right now at this stage? Well, this has always been a tense relationship ever since Jeff Sessions made the decision to recuse himself, and it's never really fully recovered. There have been times where the tensions have been reduced between the two men, but right now we're seeing that frustration again boil back up to the surface for the president. So it wouldn't surprise me if this isn't the last of his attacks on Jeff Sessions as it relates to the uh, Mueller investigation. You know, Jeff Sessions has had a long history in Congress on Capitol Hill. He has a lot of backing from the right. I'm just curious if it was Sessions versus President and Trump and people are looking at the Republican base. Is there a way to gauge which man is more popular? Well, the president seems to have really tightened his grip on the Republican Party and the base. I mean, we saw that last night at the rally where there's this rock of supporters and, and these endorsements he's making in GOP primary races. So he really seems to be the driving force in the Republican Party. And anyone in the Republican Party who's perceived as getting in his way is going to be seen as the enemy. So, you know, I talked to a lot of Trump loyalists, and they're obviously just as upset with Jeff Sessions as the president is. Uh, that being said, Jeff Sessions, as you said, is keeping his head down and and really uh, bearing in for the long haul. You mentioned the rally last night in Tampa, Florida. The president was there. He addressed the trade war with China. I want to play you a soundbite from that. And I want to thank our farmers. Our farmers are true patriots. Because China and others have targeted China, had others, remember this, have targeted our farmers. Not good. Not nice. And you know what our farmers are saying? It's okay. We can take it. That might not be exactly what the farmers are saying. In fact, we know they're expressing concerns. And now China already threatening retaliatory measures in response to these reports, mulling additional tariffs as well. There's a bailout also in the works. Do we know at this point what the president's endgame is? Well, at least in the short term, Rena, there seems to be a movement toward putting on $200 billion in additional um, ter tariffs on Chinese goods. Uh, th this could be in place by the end of the month. So uh, farmers are very concerned. The Commerce Department, of course, put out this aid package for farmers uh, last week. But uh, I wouldn't surprise me if there's another request for even more aid, especially heading into the midterm elections. These are states that are affected that are, are really in the middle of Trump country. And there's going to be tremendous political pressure for the president to address their concerns. And also while in Florida, Jordan, the, the president also made the case for voter ID laws. I want to play you that soundbite that had some of us scratching our heads a little. We believe that only American citizens 
should vote in American elections. You know, if you go out and you want to buy groceries, you need a picture on a card. You need ID. You go out and you want to buy anything, you need ID and you need your picture. In this country, the only time you don't need it, in many cases, is when you want to vote for a president, when you want to vote for a senator, when you want to vote for a governor or a congressman. It's crazy. I don't think the president's bought groceries recently, it seems. I don't know the last time I needed an ID to buy groceries, really. But he's obviously looking at voter ID issues. First off, what is this with this claim? And is this an indication that he might use these claims of voter fraud going into midterms? Yeah, a little bit of a mangled message there. I'm not sure the last time I used an ID either. But uh, that being said, this seems to be a concerted effort by the president to appeal to his conservative base. You look at the themes that he's talking about leading into the midterms, uh, you know, getting tough on immigration, uh, voter ID. These are issues that really animate his base, uh, you know, white conservatives in the middle of the country. And he's going to keep hammering those issues as the election gets closer. Yeah, I can see that message important. I do will say Florida does have great grocery stores, Publix among them, if you've ever been can get good sandwiches from that place. I got a uh, highly recommend Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> no ID either. I, I highly <laughs> recommend it. Well, before you go, Jordan, though, I do want to ask you about health care. We know this is going to be a big issue for Democrats because it's really a key talking point for them with midterms, the Trump administration paving the way forward for some sort of a short term health insurance plan. What's that about? Well, right. So they finalized these regulations this week where uh, consumers will be able to buy your know, shorter term insurance that doesn't uh, have all the consumer protections that Obama care plans have, like covering pre-existing conditions, for example. Uh, this is an effort by the Trump administration to really chip away at the Obamacare law after they were, uh, failed to. Uh, repeal it last year. Uh, so this, this I think, is going to be a controversial issue. Democrats are saying these plans won't be good for consumers. They won't be getting what they need. And I'm sure that this is, will be an issue they're talking about heading into the midterms, making the case to voters that their health care could be affected if the president and Republicans are still in power, uh, you know, come next year. Jordan Fabian, thank you so much for joining us. Politics expert and grocery store connoisseur. <laughs> thank you.